Welcome to part 2 of the ZF-S640 step-by-step -step disassembly. In this video, we will be taking the main and counter shaft apart. Both the main and the counter shaft have been removed in part 1 and are ready to be taken apart. You will need split plates like these to remove the gears, etc. These split plates I made myself. If you don't have the means to make them, you can probably buy them on eBay. This is the split plate I made for the removal of the third and sixth counter shaft gear. Remove the fourth gear input shaft with just lifting it off the main shaft. Do this before you put the main shaft into the press. The main shaft is already in the press and my split plate for the removal of the reverse gear sits in the right place. Your press will have to have a pressure of at least 25 tons. Best would be 50 tons just to be sure. Don't forget to remove the 3 and the 4 synchronizer sleeve, pressure piece, ball and spring. I forgot and so I had a few parts lying on the ground after the synchronizer body came loose. Don't lose any of the synchronizer parts or you're in big trouble. Now you can remove the synchronizer body, reverse and first gear. We're back on the workbench and you can see how burned the bearing inner race and gears are. This happens to a lot of these ZF trannies when driving over 100 miles per hour. In my case, it was over 160 miles an hour, which most of you will never be able to drive in the US. Now take off the snap ring. Here you can see the synchronizer internal ring, intermediate ring and outer synchronizer. Look at the brass synchronizer ring and watch out for any cracks or damaged surfaces. Remove like we've done before the pressure piece, synchro ball and spring. Do not lose any of these parts. Inspect the synchronizer sleeve for any damage. Setting up the press to remove the 1-2 synchronizer body and second gear. Synchro body and gear are loose and ready to get inspected. A quick look at the sync ring, intermediate and internal ring. Remove the second gear. and check the bearing. Before we press off the synchronizer body, we have to take off the snap ring. Here we are pressing off the synchro body of the first and second gear. With a powerful press, no problem.
Just taking a quick look at the bearings of the first gear. Okay, main shaft disassembled and all gears etc. lined up for further inspection. Take off the snap ring from the fourth counter shaft gear and we are ready to press it off. Here I am pressing off the fourth gear. The third gear will be done in the same manner. No use showing how to take off every gear would take too long. Here are third, fourth and sixth counter shaft gears on the bench. Everything looks fine. Now we're going to check the synchro ring gap. It's always the same procedure. Place synchronizer ring over respective gear tapered mating surface. Include intermediate internal rings for first and second gear. While holding the ring centered, measure the gap between the gear synchronizer teeth using a feeler gauge. Replace the synchronizer ring if the measurement is less than 1.2 millimeters or 0 0.050 inch. Same goes for the third, fourth gear, fifth, sixth gear. Reverse gear gap is smaller with 0 0.7 millimeters or 0 0.028 inches. No use measuring the synchro ring that was burned. So we will have to scrap the main shaft, first and reverse gear, the bearings, synchro ring, etc. Before I remove the fifth counter shaft gear, I have to take off the snap ring. Again, we have to set up the press for the removal of the fifth counter shaft gear. The fifth counter shaft gear is off and is ready for inspection. All gears from the main shaft and counter shaft have been removed. That's it. Hope you enjoyed watching the disassembly of the main and counter shaft. If you have any questions pertaining to teardown of both shafts, feel free to ask.